my soul rejoice and praise the Lord mm, rejoice and praise the Lord rejoice and praise the Lord, O oh, my soul, rejoice and praise the Lord, O oh, my soul, oh, my soul, rejoice and praise the Lord, yes, rejoice and praise, hi darling, the Lord, rejoice, good morning Audrey, and praise the Lord, oh my soul, rejoice and praise the Lord, oh my soul, my soul, my soul, rejoice and praise the Lord, oh, just rejoice and praise the Lord, rejoice and praise the Lord, oh my soul, rejoice and praise, rejoice and praise the Lord, oh my soul, my soul. Just rejoice and praise, praise the Lord. Yes, do I rejoice and I praise my God. This morning, the Lord bless every one of you for coming. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning. Um, of course, you know, this is uh, so your blessings ministry and I uh, I come on every morning uh, To minister unto you the word of the living God and I know that you are being blessed every time you get the opportunity to come and um, I'm blessed too. I, I get blessed too now this morning. You know how we do it. We cannot congregate without us giving God thanks if if our congregation or if our coming together is just for you to just be here, then it will really not profit. But I want us to take some time and I want us to stretch forth our hands wherever you are watching me from. And let's thank the Lord. All right, let's do it this morning. Let's give God the praise. Oh, I see my husband on good morning. Good morning, good morning. I want us to bless the name of the living God for all that God is doing in our lives. If you are alive this morning, it is not because, like I always say, it's not because you are too special. It's not because you've done anything. It is just the grace of God. And so can we appreciate God's grace? Emilia, good morning. Emilia, good morning. Can we appreciate God's grace? Lift up your hands with me and let's appreciate God's grace. Okay, Father, we thank you. Come on, thank the Lord with me. Come, can you do that with me this morning? Come on, let's do it. Father, we give you praise. We give you honor. Uh, we adore you for who you are. Father, not because of the things you do for us. Oh, of course, we know you do many things for us. But this morning, we are taking this time to say thank you for the gift of life. We want to say thank you that everything that the enemy plotted against us throughout the night, Lord, if you had permitted it, some of us will not have been alive this morning, but you shielded us with your right hand. And Father, you protected us from the arrows and Father, from the, from the scheme of the wicked one. And Lord, you opened the doors of life and we escaped 
the tricks of the enemy. Therefore, this morning, Lord, we lift up our hands and we say thank you. A million thanks for what you are about to do in our midst. This morning, be glorified, be exalted, be magnified. Thank you. We salute you, Holy Spirit of the living God. Now, I'm asking this morning that you gather us unto yourself from the north, the south, the east, the west. There are people, my God, that are all over the world, that this word is tailored for them. Therefore, Lord, I'm asking that, Father, you will gather them by your spirit, and they will gather on this platform here, and that, Father, they will hear your word, and that their lives and their hearts will be turned around, and that, Lord, they will seek help wherever help comes from. Therefore, Lord, I thank you, and I adore you. Hear us this morning. Be in our midst, in our homes, wherever we are watching you from. People are watching you from. Wherever, let them feel your presence. Stay right there with them. Speak to them, oh God. Minister to their minds and to their hearts. That Father, their lives will take a new turn. And it's going to be a wonderful turn for them, for their families, for their children, for their community, and for the country as a whole. And for the body of Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, amen. Can I hear an amen? Come on. Let me hear an amen this morning. Amen. Wonderful. Now, we are still on the subject um, of anger. I got a call from one of, my, one of my mothers. Oh, Jesus. And I love her so much. And um, she called and... Um, you know, she's not the computer type, you know, like, let me go on the computer, no. But by the grace of God, she, um, she watches me on YouTube. And um, she calls me and she gives me, you know, oh, good morning. Good morning, darling. Oh, you're watching from Denmark. Good morning, honey. Good morning. It's a blessed morning. And I'm asking the Lord to bless you for the time um, you have taken to, to tune in this morning. May, may the Lord bless. Jennifer, good morning, honey. Good morning. And so, this morning, we are going to go back into the word of the living Lord, the, the living God. And I know it is, um, it is time. Good morning, Sue. I know it is time. It is time for lives to be turned around. It is time for destinies to be turned around. It is time for you to um, have um, a new perspective of what God wants to do in your life, okay? Rose, good morning, in your life, all right? And um, every one of us, and I've said it many times, every one of us have an assignment. You just didn't appear on the face of the earth just, just for being here. You, you came here on an assignment. And it's, it's sad that some of us will not... Oh, Joanna, good morning. Some of us, Chicago, good morning, honey. Some of us will not fulfill our destinies, okay? Oh, Kerry, good morning. Some of us, oh, Aminata, good morning. Some of us will not, will not fulfill our full, um, oh, Tina, good morning, honey. Some of us will not fulfill our whole destiny, you know, the fullness of what God wants us to do here on earth before we die. Why? Because we don't take time in God's presence so that God himself will show us or will direct us or will lead us or will teach us what, what he wants us to do. Um, good day, Kate, what he wants us to do. And so this morning, um, I want you to open not just your mind, but open your heart as well. And let the word of the Lord have its, its, its free cause in you. Let the word of the Lord bring transformation to you and to, you know, and to the families around you. Now, do you know that when one person life is completely changed i believe in the power of one good morning darling good morning i believe in the power of one um the bible tells us okay it says one shall chase a thousand two ten thousand i believe in the power of one i believe that one person if i say i believe in the power of one i mean that one person can make a total difference in this world. One person. Now, Nelson Mandela, Nelson Mandela, one person, even though other people came and supported him, stood with him because he did not do it alone. 
But we hear so much of Nelson Mandela because he stood for a cause. And that cause was not an evil cause. Good morning, Harriet. That cause was not an evil cause. He stood for a righteous cause. And that righteous cause, okay, Jennifer, I'm glad I'm talking to you this morning, honey. That righteous cause, he stood for one, one person. And uh, when he had the idea, the, the motivation to do what he did, God brought people to stand with him, to help him, to support him. And it's interesting that almost everybody that stood with him to bring apartheid to an, to an end, anybody who stood with him, it's interesting that most of them, Lynn, good morning, um, most of them, Chandra, Chandra, good morning, most of them are dead. They died before Nelson Mandela died. He had a vision. And it was a burning desire. It was, I want you to listen to me this morning. It was a burning, we are still on the subject of anger. It was a burning desire. Does that mean that Nelson Mandela was never angry? I believe many times he was angry. Oh, thank you, Ekuya. I believe many times he was angry. But he geared his anger towards the right cause. He geared his anger towards the right cause. There are people who made a tremendous difference. And today they have lived their um, um, print on the shores of history. They have lived their print. Or they are, some of them are still alive. Some of them are dead. But they lived their print on the shores of history. And years will come, generations will come, and their names will still be heard. Generations. Generations will come, and their names will still be heard. Why? It's because they decided to do something for their generation. And I believe God has called you to do the same. One, the power of one can make a whole difference. And one person can also destroy a whole generation. One can make a difference. One can destroy a whole generation. Somebody by the name Adolf Hitler, or Americans will call it Adolf, we call him Adolf Hitler. And this man, anytime you hear the name Adolf Hitler, I mean, chills go down your spine because one person was able to stand. One person. And he was able to convince a whole nation to, to stand with him. One person was able to com convince a whole nation to stand with him and literally killed more than six. I'm not talking about 600. Six, uh, six, six thousand. Six million Jews were killed by one man's influence. Six million Jews were totally killed. One man's influence. And so one person can rise up and say, I want to make a difference. Not a bad I mean, difference, a good difference. I want to leave a mark on the shores of history so that someday when you are dead and gone, they'll say, ah, there was a woman by the name Sophia Blessing. There was a woman by the name Sophia Blessing and she touched lives and, 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 and many souls were saved under her ministry. Okay? And so and then for example, I mean I'm, this is an example. For example, that 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 um I don't know a whole bunch of people, you know, even though they watch me, but I don't know them personally. But somebody um like uh, like Jennifer, I know Jennifer, I've seen Jennifer before. Somebody like Susie, I've seen Susie before. Somebody like Portia, I've seen all these people, I've seen them before. And so I, I, I'm believing God that, that you will leave a mark here on earth. You will allow your life to matter. The key word is matter. Let your life matter here on earth. That when the day comes when God calls you into glory, somebody somewhere 
will come and say, my God, because of this woman, I was able to graduate from college. Because of this woman. Now, with that said, we are going to go into the word of the Lord. Now, yesterday, sometimes you hear a whole lot, you know, of um, people inboxing you and saying a whole lot. But there was a lady that called me yesterday. My God, Anda. The lady cried until I was crying. Hello, darling. Really? Really? We will talk. And so, um, she called yesterday. The woman cried. I, I, I don't know who she is. I've never met her before. But the woman cried until I was literally crying. I mean, I am that compassionate. The woman cried until I was crying. Zoe, good morning. And uh, what was the issue? She's gone to school. She's done many times doing her exams to become a doctor. And she kept failing. And she kept failing. And so her mother connected her to a prayer line. No, you're not, you're not late, honey. Adora, you are not late. Don't worry. Good morning, Adora. And so good afternoon, Angelina. And so, oh, good morning, Angelina. Oh, good afternoon. Okay. Now, so uh, she started coming on the prayer line. And, uh, you know, we'll pray and uh, her prayer life. The Bible said that faith cometh by hearing and by hearing the word of the living God. And so um, while she kept coming and faith was, was boiling up, okay, her faith was increasing day by day because she was hearing the word of the living God. And so faith, 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 and prayer. And the last time she went and she wrote the exam, she passed. And so yesterday she called and I mean, the woman cried until, until I was crying. I mean, she cried. She says, I've been to many places. I have, I have encountered many people, including men and women of God. And, and it's like, I, what I was looking for, I never got. But when the Lord connected, I kept praying and I kept believing. She said, there is something that causes people to just believe. She says, I believed. And today, she has a certificate as a, a certified doctor. And yesterday, she called to say, thank you. You have no idea whose life God wants you to touch. And so, there are certain things in our lives that God wants to bring us to a place of purging those things out of our lives. He wants to take out the anger. He wants to take out the unforgiveness. He wants to take out the strife. He wants to take out the fighting. All these things, God wants to remove these things from, from off our lives so that our lives can be a light unto somebody else. And so we are still on the subject of anger. Open your Bible with me. Yesterday we touched on it. And I'm going to touch on it again. Okay? Genesis chapter 4. Let's go to it. Genesis chapter 4. Oh, do you know the song I'm just hearing? As the deer panted for the water so my soul Panted after thee, oh, you alone are my heart. Desire and I long to worship you. Oh my God. The second one said, you're my friend and you are my brother even though you are my king oh 
yeah. I love you more than me. The other so much more than anything. You alone are my strength and my shield. And, and you alone may my spirit yield. You are my heart desire and I long to worship you I can literally hear the song in my ear you alone are my strength you are my shield and and you Spirit yield all oh, you alone are my heart desire and I long to worship you. Do you know I'm going into the word? Somebody is singing this song with me. And you are literally crying and you don't know why you are crying. I, I literally see you. You don't know why you are crying, but you are crying. You alone are my strength, Lord. You are my shield. And uh, you, you alone, you make my spirit yield all. Oh, you alone are my heart, desire and I long to worship you. I want you to sing this song with me. I'm telling you, I can hear it. I can literally hear it in my ear. As the deer it panted for the water so my soul longed after thee or oh, panted after thee you you alone are my heart desire and i long to worship you as the dear Panted for the water so my soul panted after thee you alone are my heart you are my heart desire and I long to worship you you alone are my strength Lord, you are my shield, you are my shield, and you, you alone, may my spirit, my spirit yield. Oh, you alone, you are my heart, my heart desire, and I long to worship you. The second verse said, look at it. You are my friend, and you are my brother, even though God, you are my king. I love you more than me, the other so much more than anything. You are my friend. And you are my brother, even though you are my king. And I, I love you more than me. the other, so much more than anything. You alone. I Strength, Lord, 
you are my shield and and you nobody but you you may my spirit yield oh you you alone are my heart my heart desire and I I long to worship you and I long to work. I want to worship you. I long, I long so much, Lord. And I long to worship you. And I long to worship you. Oh, and I long, I long to worship you. Genesis chapter 4. <laughs> Genesis chapter 4. Mm. <laughs> mm. You know, sometimes it happens like that to me. It does. I hear songs, and when I hear them, I sing them out. I hear, and, and I sing them out. I hear them. And I sing them. I'm hearing another song in my ear, but let's go into the word of the Lord, can we? And then when we are done, we'll worship. Is that okay? Let's do it. Genesis chapter 4, on the, still on the subject of anger. Let's jump to verse 3. Start from verse 3. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering, and I explained it yesterday. He brought an offering unto the Lord, and Abel he also brought of the firstling of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and his offering, he had no respect. And Cain was very wroth. Cain was very angry. And his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? And why is that countenance falling? If thou doest well, if you did what was required of you, and so if uh, if the Lord, if the Bible is saying that if you did what was required, it means that Cain knew better, but decided to do something different. I want to repeat it. It means that Cain knew better, but he decided. To do something different. Okay? Because look at it. Verse 6 says, And the Lord said unto him, Why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? In other words, you knew you knew how to what to do, but you decided to do something else. Okay? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel, thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What hast thou done? This is now God speaking. What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood, Crieth unto me from the ground. And I explained that to you yesterday. And I, I'm not going into it. Okay? I want us to progress. I want us to move forward. And so, verse 11. And now thou art cursed from the earth, which has opened her mouth. Hmm. The Lord just gave me a revelation here. Look at it. Look at your Bible. Verse 11. And now... Thou art cursed from the earth. Thou art cursed from the earth, which has opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. In other words, I am, no, I am not the one cursing you. The curse is coming from the earth. Oh, Jesus. It is the earth that is cursing you, not me. Look at it. Oh, Jesus. Good morning, Harrieta. Look at it. He says, And now thou art cast from the earth, 
which has opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, and so now what you put on the ground, oh Jesus, thank you Holy Spirit, what you put on the ground is now going to allow, you have given the ground a cause, you have given the ground a cause to fight you. Jesus, Jesus. You have given the ground a cause to fight you. You have given the ground a cause to, to, to retaliate. You have given the ground. Listen, look at it. Please, look at the word, okay? He says, and now thou art cursed, verse 11, from the earth, which has opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from your hand. When thou tillest the ground, oh God, it shall not henceforth yield unto you her strength. Genesis chapter 4, please. Verse 11. I just read verse 11. Now I'm in verse 12. When thou tillest the ground, it shall henceforth yield unto thee, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive, and a vagabond shall thou be in the earth. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Well, he should have, he should have thought about it before he allowed this thing to, to happen. Now, where did this anger come from? Because remember, it was only the four of them on the face of the earth at that time. Adam, Eve, Cain, Abel. It was just the four of them at that time on the face of this whole earth. It was just the four of them. So where did the anger come from? Remember, Eve encountered Satan in the garden. Remember, Eve encountered Satan. She took time to communicate with Satan. And you see, the devil would not come and stand before you and say, Hey, I'm the devil. No. He works on your mind. Oh my God. He starts working on your mind. He starts working on your mind. And so what you have to do is to be able to silence the voice of the enemy from entering into your mind. I, I want, this morning I'm going to say deep stuff. Okay. Now, a couple of days ago, I believe I shared with you that we have different kinds of anger. We have chronic anger. The chronic anger is the one that prolongs. I mean, it's, it never ends. And so something happened um, and uh, 15 years down the line, you are still angry, okay? Prolong, you know, anger, chronic anger. And then we have the passive one. The passive anger is like, when you know, once in a while, you know, we get angry. And I believe that passive anger um, um, speaks of every one of us, including myself. You know, once in a while we get angry, okay? And, um, you know, that's passive, passive, you know, passive anger. And then we have the overwhelmed one. The overwhelmed one, the overwhelmed one is, 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 the, is, is the one that um, comes with life, life issues, okay? Life issues. You can't pass your exam. Um, you know, this, 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 this um, um, uh, debt, it's, it's not going away and all that, and you get angry, okay? And so that is there. And then we have the self-inflicted anger. The self-inflicted anger is the one that is directed towards yourself. I am so angry about myself. I'm so angry at myself. I'm angry. I can't pass this exam. I'm angry. I'm angry. I'm angry. That self-inflicted anger, all right? And then we have the judgmental anger. The judgmental anger is the one we, we, we throw at other people, okay? We become very judgmental and uh, we, you know, we start throwing stuff at other people, all right? And so this morning, before I finish, I want you to now look at which, which area of this anger you see in your life. Is it, is it chronic anger where you easily get angry? Is it passive anger? You get anger, ang angry once in a while. Is it the overwhelming one? The overwhelmed anger? Um, the issues of life is really getting to you. Is there? Or is it, is it the, um, the, um, the self-inflicted one? Okay? Or the judgmental one? And so uh, by the time this series is done, 
God will allow us for us to be able to look at ourselves in the mirror. I'm not talking about the mirror in your bedroom or the mirror in your bathroom. The mirror, God's word, we will look into, the, into God's word, okay, to see if what God's word says is what is happening in our lives. If what we can see, what the word of the Lord says in our lives, if it is not in our lives, then we know that we have a work to do. Okay, and then the same God, all right, will help us get to where he wants us to get to. Okay, and so now Cain and Abel, they were brothers. And I believe the story, it's, you know, it's, it explains itself. Abel, I believe, loved his brother Cain. And Cain, I believe, loved his brother. And it was just the two of them, the whole world. It was just the two of them, two brothers. But then they had a mother and a father, Cain and um, Adam and Eve. Now the Bible says, um, a time came where they brought sacrifices to God. And um, Abel brought a sacrifice because he was a farmer. And so Abel brought crops. It was even an offering. And yesterday I explained, you know, into depth on it. And um, Abel, um, Cain was a farmer and Abel was a shepherd. And so Abel brought a sheep, okay, a lamb, and sacrificed it unto the Lord. And the Lord accepted that one. Why? Somebody will say, ah. But, but you see, God is biased. You know, God is something else. Why didn't God accept, you know, both of them? Well, in, 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 a, in every, um, every life, okay, if I should put it that way, um, there are requirements. There are certain things that are required in life. Uh, whether it is your education, whether it is your marriage, whether it is a job, whether it's your family. There are certain requirements and, um, to make things better, to make things happy, you know, to make things happen for you. But if you don't meet the requirement, then the opposite will begin to happen. You know, to, to happen. And so here, um, he, brought, he brought only an offering. And then and Abel brought a sacrifice literally unto God. And God accepted it. When God accepted his sacrifice, his brother, number one, got envy. Number two, was jealous. Number three, he became very angry. Number one, he, became, he envied his brother because his sacrifices was accepted. Number two, he was envious. He was jealous of his brother. Okay? And then number three, number three, he got very, very angry with his brother. And the Bible said that they were walking. He asked his brother, come to the field with me because he's a, he's a, a farmer. And so he, he knows more in the field, things concerning the field than his brother. And so he asked his brother, come on, let's go for a walk. And so he started walking with his brother. And whilst they were walking, he knew it was, it, was, it was calculated. He knew exactly what he wanted to do to his brother. He knew it. And so calculated. He calculated it, took his brother there, and then um, just, just like that, the Bible said he slew his brother. And the brother's blood, when the brother fell on the ground, his blood started spilling on the earth. I believe he knew exactly where to hit his brother because it was, it was calculated. Angry people, angry people, and I want to say it again, people that are very angry, they have the spirit of anger. They are very revengeful. I want to say it again. People that have the spirit of anger, they easily get angry. It, it's in there. It's in there. They are very revengeful. In other words, whatever you do to them, they'll do the same thing back to you very revengeful and the, when they are coming they are they are they are their actions are deadly their actions are dangerous their actions my god is just it's just overwhelming because you see you will hit somebody who is angry and uh, you go to them and you say you know what oh i'm sorry Oh, you know, I didn't really mean, you know, to do that. And I'm really sorry. And they say, oh, that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. Oh, you know, get up, get up. That's okay. That's okay. But let me tell you something. It's not okay with them. They are always looking for a day to literally unleash their anger. And when they unleash that anger, precious Jesus. I mean, they come to a place where everybody around them have to walk on eggshell. Everybody around them. I mean, when you are walking around them, you are around them, you have to walk on eggshell. I mean, it's like you, 
You can't be yourself. That's the word. You can't be yourself around them. Because you don't know what will, what will trigger them. You have no idea what to, all of a sudden they are triggered. And they do deadly things. I mean serious things. Now, I want us to take a look at something here. Anger. Anger is, is an emotional state. It's emotion. Envy, jealousy, hatred, they are all emotions. Anger is an emotional state. Okay? Now, when you get to that stage, I want to say to you, everybody gets angry. Everybody. Everybody. And I believe that it is, it is, I believe it is somehow, somehow, we can say it is allowed somehow. I'm not talking about the deadly revenge and wrath, wrath and all that, no. Because the Bible said that, be angry, but say not. So you are permitted to be angry once in a while. But where the sin comes in, it's where the anger, the anger in you, you act on the anger. Okay? You act on the anger by going to a level where it destroys property, it destroys, it is destroying your marriage, it is destroying the life of your children, um, the, um, the ego and the, um, the um, 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 prestige. Um, not only that, but the, um, the self-esteem, that's the word, the self-esteem of your children are being destroyed, totally destroyed by your anger. I mean, sometimes you hear, um, you know, parents and they are talking to their children, okay? And they open their mouth. Oh, the other day I went somewhere to an office and uh, there was a lady there that came with a, with a child. And the child probably might be... Um, maybe like around five years old. Now, a five-year-old is still a child, child, child. And so um, the woman is saying, stop, stop. And the child is still doing it. And then the woman started, you're so stupid. You are just stupid. My God. You are just stupid. And the woman just went off. I mean, a five-year-old got the woman so angry. That in the office there, I mean, other parents were literally holding on to their children. Other parents were just, they are calling, I mean, because it was a table where children, you know, were playing. And the, uh, parents were calling their children, come, hey, come. And they would mention their child's name, come, come, come. I mean, it was just appalling. And I'm saying to myself, number one, what is the underlying factor? What is the underlying current of this whole thing here? This outburst of, of anger. What is the underlying factor? Now, anybody you see that goes overboard and they get so angry that they are throwing chairs, they are hitting walls, they are booting stuff, I mean, plates are flying all over the place. It has gone above and beyond normal anger. It has gone above and beyond passive anger. Now, it has gone to another level. And this another level is the chronic one, is the, is the, the self inflicted one and is the judgmental one because and everything else is coming together and it's literally i mean the force is springing out seriously springing out and lives are being destroyed properties are being destroyed because you cannot control your anger you cannot pray and say lord take my anger away lord ee, i want my anger to be taken away no you cannot you can listen. I want us to come to a place of being real. 
let's be real. You cannot use scriptures. Okay? You cannot use prayer. Oh, you know, the Bible says, the Bible says, the Bible says, and, and I'm going to pray about it. No! Be real. Be real. Just understand that you have an issue. It's a problem. Have you ever noticed that people who have certain problems and issues, they don't want to address it? No. And so they have an anger issue, but they don't want anybody to tell them you have an anger issue. Oh, even just cough and they get angry. Be real. Okay? We are using church. We are using prayer. Prayer is good. Church is good. I love to pray. Anybody around me knows I love to pray. Church is good. Prayer is good. Okay? Um, um, and everything else is good. That, I mean, everything else is good. But be real. Face the fact that I have an issue and I have to do something for, for it. Oh, the Lord bless you from Paris. I, you have an issue and do something about the issue. Your children can't even enjoy you. Your husband can't enjoy you. Your wife can't enjoy you. Your, your, your friends can't enjoy you because they don't know what will trigger you. They don't know what it is. Now, it is something, there is something underneath it. And sometimes you have to face the fact and be open and talk about it. There are people who don't know how to talk. They don't know how to express themselves. And so they hold all this anger in them. Now, Cain could have spoken to his brother and said that, you know what? God accepted your sacrifice. Because when you read it here, the Bible says, God says, if you have done very well, wouldn't your sacrifice or your offering, wouldn't it be, that, be accepted if you have done well? Okay, so he could have gone to God and says, God, you know what? Or he could have gone to his brother Abel and he says, Abel, teach me. How did you, how did you do this for God to accept your sacrifice? And so my brother, teach me. But no, he, get, he got envious, he got angry, and he killed his brother. Anger that is not checked becomes deadly. Anger that is not checked becomes deadly. I want to say it again. Anger that is not checked becomes deadly. Because, first of all, it starts with, with passive anger. Okay? Whilst it's passive anger, you get angry once in a while, and then, and then, and then it comes to overwhelming anger. And then when it comes to overwhelming anger, then it comes to self-inflicted anger. And then once it becomes self-inflicted anger, now it becomes judgmental anger. Now it moves from, from judgmental anger and it becomes chronic anger. Where nobody can even sit at the table to eat with you. Many children's lives have been destroyed by anger. And these children, because they are children, for example... Those of us from Africa, we have a way of bringing forth our children. Discipline is good because even the Bible says, and spare the rod and, and, you know, and, and destroy or spoil the child is there. But we have to come to a place of knowing how. Because you see, when your children are growing up, I say this to my family all the time. Children don't learn by what you tell them. They learn by what they see you do. Children don't learn by what you tell them. Hey, my listen, smoking is very bad. Don't smoke. And your child is seeing you smoking. Every morning. Your child sees you smoking, and yet you are telling your child not to smoke. What kind of example are you setting? And so children do not learn by what you say to them. Your children, they learn by example. What they see you do. And so when your children see you standing or sitting at your dining table, 
and you are literally destroying somebody else's life. You are cursing the person. You are, you are insulting the person. You are doing this. Now, your children see it. Because remember, you are not teaching them anything. You are not saying, don't, no, don't talk about people. Or you are telling them, don't talk about people. And they see you doing it. Your children learn from it. And so a time comes, you are asking your children, who taught you that? Uh-uh. Your actions have taught your child a lesson. Your actions have taught your child a lesson. Now, as Africans, we have a way. If your child does something, your child comes to you and says, um, Ma, the, the thing you asked me to do, I have forgotten what you asked me to do. Mama, what did you tell me to do again? And that starts a war. Are you stupid? Are you, are you, are you stupid? Hey, you are very stupid. You are very stupid. What are you doing? You are invoking a spirit into the atmosphere. Life and death is in the power of your tongue. Life. You are shaping the life of your child with your tongue. So when you get to that place where you are angry and everybody else, have you realized there are people who get so angry and when they get to that point, they destroy, they slap, they do everything. And when the spirit leaves them, because it's a spirit, when the spirit leaves them for a short time, they come to you and they say, oh, I'm sorry. Oh my goodness. I, I, I am so sorry. I am so sorry. It's because that spirit, at that time, the spirit left them. And so they come back to their normal senses. And just like that, when anything doesn't go their way, when they think that you are disrespecting them, when they think that you didn't greet them well, when they think that you didn't smile or you didn't go on your knees to beg them or you didn't go on your knees to say good morning, sir, that triggers something. And so now the question is, what is the underlying factor? Cain killed his brother. Killed. The anger that got in him, that spirit started speaking to Cain. Kill him. Destroy him. Assassinate him. And the voice of the spirit of anger, it has a voice. And so you can literally silence the voice. Let me, let me give you an example. Somebody did something to me years ago. And um, I went to a store. And when I went to the store, just as I packed you know, my car, I saw the person also got out of their car and was going into the store. Now, all of a sudden, things that happened a couple of years ago, all of a sudden, the enemy started bringing the thing back into my mind. Oh, remember what, 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 what this man did to you? Look at the way the man more treated you. Look at, do you know what I did? I'm the confession of a preacher. Do you know what I did? I sat in my car and I screamed on top of my voice. <laughs> I screamed on top of my voice. Devil, shut up! I screamed. Devil, shut up! And all of a sudden, I said to myself, why did I scream like that? Because a voice was now trying to impose itself. A voice, a voice that is not of God, 
was trying to impose itself on me that I will begin to misbehave. I will begin to act foolish. I will begin to act in a way that will not glorify God. And so I sat in the car. I said, devil, uh-uh. It's gone. It's done. I have, I have forgiven. And that's it. I said, nobody is going to make me a garbage can and pump and i said and oh my god and i said i said devil you are not going to make me a garbage can and pump garbage into my mind and pump garbage into my heart i said no in the name of the lord jesus you are not staying right here in my mind or in my heart get out in the name of jesus and you know what i did i put on my oh god i can i put on i pick up my lip my lip gloss and I put on my lip gloss again. I said, devil, now look at me. Hey, I am a child of God. And because my father is forgiven, I know how to forgive. I know how to forgive. I got up, closed my door, fixed myself, entered into the store. When I entered into the store, as I was entering, the person was coming out of the store as I was entering. The person, I met the person at the gate. And uh, I said, oh, hi. How are you? And then the person was like in shock. Why? Because maybe this person thought that I will see them and I will, you know, I'm angry. What am I angry about? Now, the Bible says, if we hide iniquity in our heart, the Lord will not hear us. And so once you are busy harboring anger in the inside of you, oh, my mother was not there. You know, she didn't take care of me. My father was not there. He didn't take care of me. But you did not die. You are still alive. You have a God who can turn your situation around. Pick up yourself, my darling. Shake the dust off yourself and say, you know what? With God on my side, I know I can do all things. With God on my side, I have seen people who nobody took care of them. And today, oh God, their lives their lives are a blessing to humanity. Nobody was there for them. Nobody. Nobody. But they decided, they made up their mind that they were going to make their way prosperous. God. They made up their mind. God is not going to make your way prosperous. You have to make your own way. You have to. But, but you see, he comes and he helps you. But you have to make the effort. When I was growing up, I thought that it was a scripture and that it was in the Bible for some reason. I don't know why I thought it was in the Bible. Heaven help those who help themselves. It's not in the Bible. But it is, it is a statement of truth. God will help you when you decide to make a move or to take a step. Then he comes in and he helps you for you to become. Look at something with me this morning. You are holding so much unforgiveness in your heart. And you are angry. Unforgiveness and anger comes hand in hand. You are so angry. And that anger is, is causing, mixed with unforgiveness. Now it's becoming very deadly. Now, forgiveness is not recommended. Listen to me, my darling. Forgiveness is not recommended. Forgiveness is required. Forgiveness is not recommended. Oh, I recommend, you know, you know. No, it is required of you to forgive. Forgiveness, forgiveness is not recommended. Oh, we, well, we recommend that you. No, it is required of you to forgive because many of us, you see, 
Anger comes with unforgiveness. Anger, it comes, it's, it's like it's intertwined with unforgiveness. Because you cannot forgive, it, it's causing you to be very angry. I am angry at my friend. I am angry. I am angry. I am angry. And you keep, and sometimes you see, you see them bringing it out of their mouth. I am angry. I am angry. I am angry. Now, what you are saying out of your mouth, you are invoking a spirit to take over it. Now, the spirit of anger now comes and takes his seat in your life. And everybody is shunning away from you. Nobody can come close to you. Everybody is staying away from you because they realize you have an anger issue. The problem is there. Now, I want to ask you a question. What is the underlying factor of all this feeling and all these things in you, what is the underlying factor? Is there any way you can look for somebody you can trust and talk to them? I believe if Cain could have talked to his brother and said, brother, teach me how to, to do this thing here. I did not get it right. Show me. How did you get it? Show me how to do it. I believe his brother would have taught him or showed him. I got an inbox from a lady. And then she says, I have been through two divorces because I have this problem. I literally, I literally abuse my husband's on two different occasions and they couldn't take it and they left me and so when I tuned in and you were talking about anger she said I got angry and I really wanted you I wanted to just go off and go and mind my business but then she says there was something that kept me watching you I don't know what it was she said, there was something that kept me watching you. So I kept watching, and I kept watching, I kept watching. I don't know what it was. And then she says, now I know that I have a problem, and I need help. She says, now I know that I have a problem, and I need help. People around you, can't enjoy you. Sometimes look for somebody you can trust and go to them and ask them. I have a, or tell them I have an issue and I need help. What is the issue? Maybe when you were a child, you were abused. Maybe your parents told you either or mother or father told you you are worthless. Maybe somebody did something to you when you were a child and it's bottled down in you so bad and as you grew up you see certain behaviors you became very rebellious and so you rebelled nobody could talk to you nobody could tame you nobody sometimes it is not your doing your great 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 grandfather was angry your great great great, -great grandfather was angry your great great great, -great grandfather was angry your grandfather was angry your father is angry and you, you see the trait, you see it in the bloodline. And now it's affecting you. You don't want to be like that. Paul says, the things 
I want to do, I cannot do. But the things I don't want to do, those are the things I see myself doing. He says, oh, 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 wretched me, who can deliver me? Who can, nobody can deliver you but God. But first you have to acknowledge that you have a problem. If you don't acknowledge that you have a problem, nobody can help you. Not even God can help you. Somebody will say, why, why would you even say that? Even in salvation, you have to acknowledge that you are a sinner. If you go walking around, I'm righteous, I'm righteous. Me, I don't, I, I don't care. I am a righteous person. Well, go around saying you are righteous. It's wonderful. But God can't help you. Jesus tells us of a story of two people, and you know Jesus always spoke in parables, of two people that went entered into a temple, and one of them was standing up and saying, Oh, you know, Father, I thank you that I, I you know, I'm righteous. I fast two days in a week. I give alms. I am, I am, I am a giver. You know, I am a, um, I'm, um, I'm very humble. <laughs> I am very humble. I mean, I mean, everybody knows I'm humble. I'm very humble. And you think everybody is stupid around you. I'm very humble. And, uh, you know, I'm forgiving. I, for me, I forgive. And people are seeing the trait of so much unforgiveness because you are, you are, you, you want to retaliate. I mean, and your retaliation is deadly. And so this one person is standing in the temple and going on and on bragging to God. And Jesus said there was another man who could barely lift up his head. He bowed his head in shame. And the man was smoting his heart or smiting his heart and weeping and crying. And he couldn't even lift up his head, but his head was bowed and he was crying. And the only thing the man could say was, Lord, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. I'm a sinner. I can't even lift up my head to look at you because I am so ashamed. I acknowledge that I am a sinner. Lord, have mercy on me. And Jesus said, the two of them who went out righteous. Was it the one who was standing there? I'm righteous. I fast two times in a week. You know, I am this, and I'm this, and I'm this, and I'm this. And sometimes they come, oh, and the Lord said, and the Lord showed me, and the Lord showed me, and, the, and, this, and this one that, and that one that, and that one that. Uh, look at yourself. Look at yourself. Sometimes, you see, you know, uh, marriages are collapsing. And everybody is pointing hand to the other person. Listen, she did this, and he did that. And she did this. And he did that. And God wants us to look at ourselves. What did you contribute to the problem? Can you look at yourself? Look at yourself. What, what is going on? What is wrong with you? Sit down and look at yourself. Am I doing right? Am I acting right? What is it that I, I have to make changes in my life? I was talking to a mighty woman of God yesterday. And after I finished talking to her, I said, Lord, thank you for raising women like this in this end time. She says she called her children. And she was talking to her children. She was asking her children, I want you to be very honest with me. Be very honest with me. Am I difficult to live with? She called her children. Am I doing anything that is to you that is not good? Am I doing... How many of us can call our children 
and ask our children. You know, the other day, something happened. And uh, my husband called my oldest daughter and said, sit down, I want to talk to you. So she sat down. And then my husband said, I'm sorry. There was no need for me to be screaming at you. There was no need. I don't even know why I screamed at you. And I'm sorry. And it did something to me. Where we come from, fathers don't say sorry to their children. Culture. And there are certain foolish cultures that is messing up homes and, and, and marriages are breaking because of Foolish cultures. Our culture says this. Our culture says that. Our culture says that. Now, if the culture blessed those people, their marriages would have been intact. If the, the culture blessed those people, their children would not, would not be going wayward. If the culture blessed those people, their family would not be dying one after the other. What kind of a culture is this? There is only one culture. And the culture is culture. This, the word of the Lord, is our culture. We look at ourselves and we allow the word of the living God to form and shape our lives. Culture? You are talking about culture? And your children have no self-esteem. Because you have beat them down so much with your words, with your words, that your children don't even feel like they are they are human. And so in the house they can do anything. But when your child gets out of the house and goes to school, your child is slapping everybody, including the teacher. Because they have bought all this anger in the inside of them. And they cannot express it in the house. They go out there and express it. And when they go out and express it, who do you think get the shame? You. Train up a child the way they should go. When they grow, they will not depart from it. You are beating down that child with your words. You are beating down your husband with your words. You are beating down your wife with your words. And yet, you want your wife to be proper. You want your husband to be proper. And yet, you are beating them with your words. What is going on? Where is the word of the living God? We have thrown the word of God out. We have literally ignored the word of the Lord. And we are allowing society to shape us. But if society can shape us well, look at the people in the society. They can control their children. They can control their homes. Their marriages are a mess. Some of them can't even stay with one wife. You're talking about culture? Whilst we are talking about the word of the living God, you are talking about culture. Oh, in our culture, every man has to marry three wives. In our culture. And yet, you are telling your children to be holy. You are telling your children, hey, you have to be holy. Live a holy life. And meanwhile, nobody sees what you are doing. But when you get out of your house, you tell your wife, you tell your husband, I am going to work. It is only God who knows where you go. It's only God who knows where you go. And you want, listen, children, listen. You have to be very good. You have to be, but you yourself. You are doing opposite. And children don't learn by what you tell them. Children learn by what they see you do. What are you doing? What are you doing? That is messing up 
your entire family. Anger. Your wife can't enjoy you anymore. Yes, we understand that you've been through things in life. Talk about them. Air it out. Let somebody stand with you and help you. There is no need for you to be cutting. Somebody sent me something, a man who is so angry. And he picked up. He always beat his wife. Always, every little thing. And the woman is so afraid. She doesn't want to leave. Because one minute the man beats her, the next minute he comes and he says, I am sorry. The last anybody heard of her, the man was angry and picked up something and hit the woman. And that was it. She couldn't survive, she died. If you are in any abusive relationship, Listen to me, child of God. Please. You cannot seek for help for the one who is the abuser. They have to go seek help. And so the man is slapping you silly. And yet, in the name of love. And so the man is killing you. You are watching me. You have so much anger. Nobody can stand around you. When anger develops to a stage, it becomes wrath. And when wrath has come to its full matured state, it becomes deadly. And it can easily kill. And so there are many people that are walking on the face of the earth. They are emotionally scarred. Emotionally. Emotionally, they are wounded. And yet they have nobody to talk to. Sometimes, I'm going to go a little, you know, divert a little bit. Sometimes, there are people in your life that you can't even trust to talk to them. You can't even trust your pastor. Because he runs his mouth. She runs her mouth. Your case will be everywhere. So you can't even tell anybody. And so that thing that is eating you up. Is still eating you up until one day. You rise up. And you kill. Then the same people will come. And say we knew he was angry. When you saw it. What did you do about it? I pray for you that you allow the Lord to work on you. And you yourself will make up your mind. I need help. Anger, the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, lies in the bosom of fools. Anger. It lies in the bosom of fools. And anybody who is an angry person is not a friendly person. Anybody who is an angry person is not a friendly person. They can pretend to be friendly, but only for a little while. And the real them will surface. The real Emilia, may the Lord send you help. Emilia Sapo, may the Lord send you help, my darling. I am lifting up prayer for you. May Jehovah send you help. May God send you help. And so, you are there. Everybody, including people whom God has sent to help you, they can't even help you. They cannot stay around you because nobody knows every morning even without anybody aggravating you you are so angry 
and somebody goes, oh, good morning, sir. What is good about this morning? What is really good? What, what is good about this morning? Oh, my friend, shut up. You know how the Nigerians say, my friend, shut up. What did the person say? Absolutely nothing. The appearance of the person alone is making you angry. What is going on? Check it. Cain did not check his anger. He became wrath and he killed his brother. Look at me. Look. Pick up your Bible with me. Let's do this. Open your Bible with me. Let's do this. Oh, Rabbi Asuki Malaga de 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 de. Makuli Patapayaba. First John. First John. First John chapter 3. First John chapter 3. First John chapter 3. I want you to look at verse 11. First John chapter 3, verse 11. Let's, you know what? Let's read from verse, verse 9. Let's start it from verse 9. He says, Whosoever is born of God, does not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him. And he cannot sin because he's born of God. Verse 10. In this, the children of God are manifest. And the children of the devil, whosoever doeth, doeth not righteousness, is not of God. Neither he that loveth not his brother. If you are a hater, you are not of God. I didn't write the Bible. Look at it with me. First John chapter 3, verse 10 says, In this, the children of God are manifest. Those that are children of God, they are manifest. And the children of the devil. So the children of God are manifested and the children of the devil. Okay? Now, he's telling us what will make you know that this one is a child of God or is a child of the devil. He says, whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. Neither he that loveth not his brother. If you don't love your brother, you don't love your sister. I'm not talking about biologically, only biologically. No, in the kingdom of God, I am your, bro I am your sister and you are my brother. In the kingdom of God, because we all have the same father, God, every one of us. Isn't that interesting that you and your pastor, you and your pastor, we call them papa or we call them fathers. You know, we respect them enough. Oh, we do. And so we call them fathers. We call them papa and they are there. But it's interesting that you and the man you are calling father or the man you are calling, ma the woman you are calling mommy or mother, my mother in the Lord, my, my father in the Lord, you and him or her, have the same father. So, the woman you are calling mommy, the man you are calling daddy, in the sight of God, is literally your brother or your sister. Because we have the same father in heaven. I'm done with you. Look at it. Verse 11. For this is the message that ye heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. This is the message we heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one. In other words, God is saying, Cain was the son of the devil. Look at it. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one and slew his brother. And who wherefore slew him because his own works were evil and his brother's was righteous. Cain killed his brother because his works were evil. How? He did not give to God what he knew belonged to God. He decided to do what he wants. And when his brother decided to do what was right, he got angry and killed his brother. A whole bunch of us, the only thing we have not done is to literally take a knife and physically kill somebody. But a whole bunch of us, 
we are literally murderers. We are killing people. We are slandering them. We are literally messing up their lives, messing up their names. And yet, we put on a garment that says, we are Christians. We are children of God. Where is our unity? Where is it? We are busy trying to fight one another. Isn't that interesting? I heard a man of God say this the other day. He said he was praying. And he was praying for pastors. He's a man of God himself. And I know there are a whole lot of pastors that are not selfish. They pray for other pastors. Yes, they are there. There are good, genuine men of God and women of God that pray for other pastors. And so he said he was praying for pastors. And whilst he was praying, in the heat of the prayer, the Lord said, stop praying. He says, God, I'm praying for your servant. You are, he says, the Lord said, stop praying. And then he said he stopped. And he started sitting down and he was wondering, Lord, why are you telling me to stop praying? And he says, the Lord said, the anointing I gave to them to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to bring people into the kingdom. He says, the anointing I gave them, they are using the anointing to fight among themselves, to compete among themselves. The anointing, the oil I gave them, the grace I gave them, they are using it to fight among themselves. He says, the Lord said, stop the prayer. Because I invested in them. I emptied myself in them. And I was thinking that as I emptied myself in them, they will multiply me. I, God, they will multiply me in the lives of other people. But what they are doing is they are, the anointing I give them, they are using it to fight among themselves. Listen to me. Precious one, you are watching me. Listen to me. It is appointed unto man once to die. And after that, judgment. In our dispensation, there is so much happening in the world. When you hear certain things that are happening in the world, sometimes when you go on the internet, my God, your mind, you are wondering, my God. The other day, somebody sent me something and I cried like no man's business. I mean, my hand was in my stomach and I was literally crying. A hotel, a chain of hotels, chain of hotels. If I say chain of hotels, it means that it's not just one. It's the same hotel, but they have it in different state. And now, they have prepared a room, a guest room, like a normal guest room, that people will go there, and some go there, you know, for... They are businesses and all that they travel, and they are they dedicated one room in all the chains of their hotels. And people come there just to commit suicide. People go into that hotel there just to kill themselves. And so people are going, checking themselves into hotels, and they are not checking out. And the woman was so bold. The woman that was taking, um, the guy that was interviewing her, the woman that was taking, he, she took the guy, the cameraman to the room, and he was showing the cameraman. And it was on, cam on, on, on video. I have it, but I refuse to post it. Because you know why? I am giving people the idea to do what they want to do. May the Lord forbid me. And here, you know, um, they have ropes hanging. 
They have knives. They have blades. They have a gun right here in the United States of America. They have a gun. And so if you want to, you check in. You don't check out. And people are checking in. The reason why I cried was that when they were entering into the room, to check the room, there was a white older gentleman. A white older gentleman that was checking into the room. And when they finished and they left, the guy was asking the gentleman in there, why did you come here? The gentleman said, I'm tired. I have done everything and nothing is working. And so I want to end it all. And he slammed the door at the face of the lady and the cameraman. And the man asked the lady, and so, can somebody go in there and talk to the man and ask this man to reconsider what he's about to do? And the woman said, we give them option, but they choose to come and they have a right. The woman says, and they have. So they allowed them in there. A couple of hours later, they go in there and pick up the dead body and give it to the mob. And the Lord has anointed us and souls are dying by the number. And we are using the anointing God has given us to fight one People out there that are dying and going to hell. We are fighting one another and people are dying. I pray that you will be a winner of souls. That you allow the word of the living God to clean you up and get rid of all the anger and the resentment and the hatred. Get it out of your system so that your children can enjoy you. Your wife can enjoy you. Your husband can enjoy you. Your family can enjoy you. What are you going to gain? You will die but once. You were here or the Lord brought you here into this world to affect somebody's life. Why do you want to deny us of your love? Why do you want to deny us of your, your, your sweet aroma? Why do you want to deny us? It is like you seeing a man who is homeless and the man is totally messed up and finally you are able to get the man to the barber shop to you know to shave his hand to shave his beard and when you see them the same man again you say wow and they need all that bushy hair and all that it's a gentle soul sometimes some of these people do these things because they are crying out for help they don't know how to help themselves Sometimes I hear some of my daughters, Mom, you have too much patience. No. It came with a price. I was not like that before. Not at all. But life and the word have taught me it's not worth it. Change for the better. Allow the word of the Lord to work mightily in you. Turn your life around. Somebody has to enjoy your fellowship. There is a sweet spirit deep down in the inside of you. But anger has overshadowed it. And it's like a bottle that is, you have a cork at the bottle. Okay? And there's so much anger in there. 
the cork ought to be removed so that the pressure, the anger, the, the resentment, the hatred, the self, the self-destroying spirit will just come out so that the real beauty of you can be seen. Now, Sylvia, so blessings me. <laughs> um, the Lord has prompted me for us to have um, go on a retreat in Maryland. And so those of you in Maryland, Maryland, Delaware, um, New Jersey, um, Philadelphia, D.C., um, New York, Connecticut, I mean, you know. And so we, we are embarking, we are going on a retreat. And um, the date of the retreat is June 23rd to the 25th. June 23rd to 25th. I am asking, I'm asking every one of you in New Jersey, in Delaware, in Philadelphia, in, um, in New York, in uh, Maryland, because we're going, um, um, we, you know, in Maryland, okay, Sandy Cove in Maryland. And so in Maryland, um, in um, D.C., Washington, D.C., in Virginia, I'm asking every one of you, every one of you, you have to be there now. If you want to come, they, they, we only, they only gave us um, 50 rooms. They only gave us 50 rooms. And that's all they can give us. Because it's a big, very big facility and other people have taken. So they only gave us 50 rooms. And so it's a first come, first serve. First come, first serve. I want you to call me if you want to be part. It's going to be time in God's presence, where we are going to stay in God's presence for two days, and we are going to call upon heaven, and many things are going to happen. Lives are going to be transformed, transformed. Tra if I say transformed, by the grace of the living God. And so I want you to be part of it, um, you know, and uh, if you want to be part of it, which of course I believe, if we only have 50 rooms, 50 rooms. If you need information, I want you to call me. Call 914-659-5071. 914-659-5071. And so if you want you know, to be part of it, I want you to um, call and uh, make a reservation. Okay, we only have 50 rooms. That's all they gave us, 50 rooms. And so one person can take a room by yourself. Two people can be in a room. Three people can be in a room. Four people can be in a room. Okay, so they gave us one opportunity for just one room. Um, there are rooms for, you know, two people to be there. There are rooms for three people to be there. There are rooms for four people to be there. And so you can come with your sister, with your friend, and then let's gather together and let's seek the face of the Lord our God. The number again, 914 six five nine five zero seven one now if you are calling because of our time we don't have a lot of time yes we don't have call call the number and i'll give you the information we don't have a lot of time okay and so um they want us to you know um, get ourselves ready and you know bring a deposit and all that so that they'll secure the time the place and the time for us and so call call asap and uh, you know let us know that you want to be part you want to come you know for for the um for the um, the retreat you want to be part of the retreat and then when you are coming um come with somebody else call for all the informations it will be given unto you okay the lord richly bless you and i love you with the love of the lord father i thank you for the lives of your people i thank you for your word spoken to us we are so grateful lord i'm asking for your blessings the blessings of God that makes rich and adds no sorrow. Let it rest upon us, spirit, soul, and body, in the name of Jesus. If you are watching me, you have not given your life to Jesus, lift up your hand. Say, dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be Lord over my life. I am asking that, Father, you forgive me of every sin that I've committed. I confess and I decree and I declare you as Lord over my life in Jesus' name. If you pray this prayer, I want you to now um, look for a Bible believing church because you are watching me from all over the world. Look for a Bible believing church, and I want you to attend, you know, church service. I want to repeat the date. Somebody's asking for the date again. 
is June 23 to 25, June 23rd to 25th, June 23rd to 25th, okay? And um, come with your friends, come with your, you know, your family, um, call the number I gave out and then every information. But I want you to know when you are calling, you have to make sure, you have to make sure that, uh, you know, you, um, uh, you are doing your, you know, your payment so that it will secure a room for you. And so if you are coming with your family, let us know. If you are coming with your, your friends, let us know whoever you are coming with. All right. Let us know. And uh, provision will be made for you. We only have the last time. We only have 50. They only gave us 50 rooms. Now, in the 50 rooms, you can either have one room for yourself or you can share, okay, with two people in a room, three people in a room, four people in a room. You can do that. Call this number and every information will be, oh, thank you, honey. Every information will be given. It's 914-659-5242. Seven one nine one four six five nine five zero seven one, and so call and uh, the Lord will bless you. I know your life will never be the same again. The Lord bless. You are in God's hands. In God's hands, there is life. There is peace. There is joy. In God's hands, there is protection, health. Outside of God's hands is nothing but trials, tribulation, pain, disappointment. Why do you want to be in a rush to get out of God's hands? Don't get out of his hands. Stay in his hands. I love you with the love of the Lord. The Lord bless you as well. All the blessings, I return the same blessing to you and to your family. The Lord bless you. Call and let's get it going to the glory of the living God. The Lord bless. Bye.